Here we are at the shrine of Baha'u'llah in the north of Israel. Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith, spent the last years of his life here in Bahchi. When he died in 1892, this shrine became Baha'u'llah's final resting place. Today, people of every nationality come here to pray and meditate. For Baha'is, the followers of Baha'u'llah, this spot is the most sacred place on earth. This movie would like to introduce you to the beauty of the Baha'i holy places, a beauty which tries to reflect the love and gratitude Baha'is feel for Baha'u'llah. Immerse yourself in the spiritual world of the Baha'i holy places. Baha'u'llah was born in 1817 in Persia, today's Iran. When he was 35 years old, God revealed to him that he was the bearer of a new divine message for mankind. Baha'u'llah began to spread God's new message. In doing so, he set in motion a series of events which led to more than 40 years of imprisonment and banishment in the hands of the Islamic government. These are the fortress walls of the Israeli port Akka. In Baha'u'llah's time, it was one of the most dreaded prison towns in the Turkish Empire. Following years of exile in Baghdad, Constantinople, and Adrianople, Baha'u'llah was banished here in 1868. Soon after the ship, which bore him, docked, he was thrown into Akka's dreadful prison. In spite of all difficulties, Baha'u'llah continued to proclaim the unity of God, the unity of religion, and the unity of mankind. After two years of suffering in the prison of Akka, Baha'u'llah and his family were transferred to the house of Abud. Baha'u'llah revealed many of his writings in this house, among which is the Kadaba Ardas, the most holy book for Baha'is. For thousands of years, the peoples of Europe and Asia have been meeting and leaving traces of their cultures in the Middle East. Let us find out where the Baha'i Gardens are located. Akka and Bakhchi can be found around this bay in the north of Israel. Ten miles to the south lies the port city of Haifa, the site of the largest Baha'i Gardens. At the time of Baha'u'llah, Haifa was an insignificant village. Today, it is the third largest city in Israel. Towards the end of his life, Baha'u'llah was permitted to visit Haifa a few times. During one of these excursions, he pointed out the spot where the remains of his precursor, the Bab, were to be laid to rest. This is the shrine of the Bab for Baha'is one of the holiest places in this world. As the divine forerunner, the Bop was given the task of preparing mankind for the coming of the new manifestation of God, Baha'u'llah. To spread this message, he founded a fully independent religion. In 1850, when he was 31 years old, the Bop was executed by order of the Persian authorities. The Baha'i Gardens in Haifa comprise the following areas. The Shrine of the Bab is the central point, surrounded by nine upper terraces and nine lower terraces. To the east can be found the administrative buildings of the Baha'i World Center. 
and below them, the Monument Gardens. The Shrine of the Bop was built under the supervision of Abdul Baha, the eldest son of Baha'u'llah. Here, 60 years after the Bop's execution, his holy remains were finally laid to rest by Abdul Baha. In 1949, Abdul Baha's grandson, Shoghi Effendi, had the Shrine of the Bop covered with a magnificent golden dome. Today, the Shrine of the Bop is embedded like a diamond in a ring of 18 terraces with nine above and nine below it. In May 2001, after 11 years of work, the terraces were finally completed. They stretch for about 1,000 meters along Mount Carmel, reaching a height of 225 meters. Since their completion, the Baha'i Gardens, which are exclusively financed by the voluntary donations of Baha'is from all over the world, have been a magnet for visitors from every race, religion, and culture. Many visitors speak of being overwhelmed by the beauty and spiritual atmosphere they find in the gardens.
The most important administrative buildings of the Baha'i world community are also embedded in the gardens in Haifa. This is the seat of the Universal House of Justice, which was built in 1983 in classical Greek style. A colonnade of 58 Corinthian columns made of white marble surrounds the building. The Universal House of Justice is the highest authority in the Baha'i world community. Baha'is around the world elect its nine members every five years. The building of the International Teaching Center was completed in 2001. It houses the appointed institution of counselors who plan and promote programs for the worldwide development of Baha'i communities. This is the center for the study of the holy texts where the Baha'i holy writings and other historical documents are compiled, translated and studied. This building, which was finished in 1999, is also home to the International Baha'i Library. The International Baha'i Archives contains the personal effects of Baha'u'llah and the Bab as well as their original writings and other relics and historical materials. Made of Italian Chiampo stone, the Baha'i Archives is the oldest administrative building. It was completed in 1957 under the supervision of Shoghi Effendi. The monument gardens can be found below the administrative buildings. These peaceful gardens contain four white marble monuments erected over the resting places of Baha'u'llah's wife Asiye, his daughter Bahie, his son Mirza Mehdi, and his daughter-in-law Monire. Baha'u'llah teaches that all men are like flowers of one garden or the drops of one ocean and should therefore associate with one another in the greatest love and friendship. This central teaching, the unity of mankind, is already a reality at the Baha'i World Center in Haifa. Here, more than 700 Baha'is from more than 70 different countries work together in utmost unity and harmony. En el jardín de tu corazón no planten sino la rosa del amor, tu amigo. En el jardín de tu corazón no planten sino la rosa. 
Hello, my name is Olga and I'm from Russia. Hi, my name is Sibe Solitevere from Zambia. Hi, my name is Corinne and I'm from the United States. Hi, my name is Martijn and I'm from the Netherlands. My name is Gonzalo and I'm from Bolivia. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Harrison and I come from Vanuatu. Hello, I'm Barbara Dietma from Germany. Mabuhay, I'm Tony Sibidan from Philippines. Hello, my name is Genevieve and I'm from Ghana. G'day, I'm Andrew from Australia. Merhaba, my name is Murat, I'm from Turkey. Hi, I'm Ada and I'm from St. Lucia. Baha'u'llah's principle of unity and diversity is not only reflected in the multicultural composition of the Baha'i community, but also in the Baha'i gardens in Haifa and Bahji. The gardens are home to more than 300 different plants, both native and exotic. Just as with people, it is often the contrast of the different forms and colors which creates the beauty and appeal. Every year, thousands of Baha'is from all over the world come to the Holy Land to pray and meditate at the shrines of the Bap and Baha'u'llah. The Baha'i gardens do not only provide a dignified setting for the shrines of the Bap and Baha'u'llah, they also help both pilgrims and visitors to find and experience precious moments of meditation and inner peace. The splashing water, the singing birds, the perfumed air, the beautiful plants, and the rich symbolism of the architecture all help to create a spiritual atmosphere. I beg thee to forgive me But the mention of thee And for every praise But the praise of thee And for every delight But delight in thy nearness And for every pleasure But the pleasure of communion with thee and for every joy but the joy of thy love and of thy good pleasure and for all things pertaining unto me which bear no relationship unto thee
Baha'u'llah promotes the equality of man and woman and the harmony of science and religion. He teaches that all prejudices must be removed if we are to achieve the unity of mankind. Baha'u'llah proclaims that all world religions teach fundamentally the same message because all the prophets are messengers of the one God. He calls upon us to love all people, regardless of their religion or ethnic background. He reminds us that our life on this planet only lasts for a brief moment compared to the eternal life after our physical death. He revealed how we can achieve detachment, true happiness, and spirituality. Baha'u'llah showed us the path that will lead to a world of peace and unity. In one of his many books, Baha'u'llah wrote, Be generous in prosperity and thankful in adversity. Be unjust to no man and show all meekness to all men. Be as a lamp unto them that walk in darkness, a joy to the sorrowful, a sea for the thirsty, a haven for the distressed. Be an ornament to the countenance of truth, a breath of life to the body of mankind, a luminary above the horizon of virtue, a dew to the soil of the human heart, and a sun in the heaven of bounty.